Hello YouTube, I'm Malcolm and this is my first video of Big Mac Breakdowns. First I'd like to thank you the viewer for rocking with me. This is my first podcast ever, let alone a Packer podcast. Uh, be expecting things surrounding the draft, free agency, as well as film breakdowns during the season. And I hope that you enjoy this content. Now I must highlight after running it back to back to back three years in a row and failing to make the Super Bowl and then even this year failing to even make the playoffs, we might be finally looking forward to a new era. Before this Packer team can determine whether they want to run it back or start a new era, they must first address this negative 16.3 salary cap hole that they dug themselves into after restructures over the last three to four years. Now with that negative 16.3 comes a plethora of upcoming key free agents Free agents such as Adrian Amos, Yash Naiman, who's a restricted free agent, Keyshawn Nixon, Alan Lazar, who said that he doesn't want to come back. End zone, touchdown! Mason Crosby, Rudy Ford, Tyler Davis, who is a restricted free agent, Mercedes Lewis, Jaron Reed, and Dean Lowry. Now, restricted free agents Yash Nyman and Chris Barnes might have to receive second round tenders if this team wants to keep them for the fact that they were undrafted free agents. Now for both Chris Barnes and Yash Nyman, it is projected that they will cost about 4.3 million if they get that second round tender. Now as for Tyler Davis, his tender is looking to be a little bit cheaper, projected to be at $2.6 million. Since he was drafted in the sixth round, we could put his original round tender on there. And who's paying the sixth rounder for Tyler Davis? I would love to see a team do that. Now, as far as bringing back free agents, the only free agents I feel like we should bring back is Yash Nyman for that $4.3 million cap hit. And for Nixon, which I feel like he could garnish a deal around $4 million. Anything less than 3 to $4 million, I'm fine with. I would be fine with. I would take that as a W, given that he is a gunner. He is a slot corner. He is a kick returner, punt returner. And he just he's made plays. He's, he's turned our special teams around. Not completely. It was still ranked 22nd in the league, but he did add a spark to that special teams unit on all cylinders. Now for some trade and cut candidates, obviously low hanging fruit, Aaron Rodgers, and some more low hanging fruit, David Bakhtiari. Uh, Jordan Love is in the mix because he said he would request a trade if Rodgers were to come back. Will they pull it off? I don't know. Uh, Aaron Jones, even though I don't think Aaron Jones is leaving this team anytime soon, I would hate it if he left this team. The only reason why I could see him being cut because it would save the team around $10 million. Uh, and he is getting up there in age, but I don't think that's going to sway the Packers to get rid of him. Hopefully, he might take a pay cut. Hopefully, it doesn't even come to that. He gets all his money. And then there's Darnell Savage and Pat O'Donnell that round out my cut and trade candidates. Now, as it's been reported, it will cost around $40 million to trade Aaron Rodgers, and that's assuming that that team takes on the rest of that deal. And as for Dave Bakhtiari, we will save close to $38 million over the next two seasons by cutting them this year. Uh, honestly, if we got rid of Bakhtiari, if we didn't, it's like one way or another. He, it's all about availability to me. I would love for him to play 17 games, but I don't think it's in him no more. Hopefully, he just retires a Packer, uh, but obviously, I'm no GM. I don't have no say in what goes on. Now, as I said, Jordan Love could request a trade. Again, I don't know what leverage he has to request a trade, but I do want to see Jordan Love play, I, and I bet he wants to play because his – Contract is expiring soon. He will have a fifth year option on his rookie deal. But after that, I'm sure he would like some promise to show some promise, excuse me, uh, so that he could get a good chunk of money like the cats in his class. Now, of course, I don't think he's going to get borough money, but <laughs> he still wants to get at least $20 million a year, $25 million a year quarterbacks. The price is going up on quarterbacks. So he at least wants to to get himself at least into that $25 million range. Now, the only way we could save money on Darnell Savage is if he is traded, he cannot be cut. That fifth year option is guaranteed. The only way we could transfer that money is if we trade him. Do I see us trading him? No, because again, as you are gonna see that we're depleted at the safety position. Uh, maybe we work out a short-term deal to keep him on the team at a lower cap hit for this year. Maybe we do trade him. I hope we don't have to give up any draft assets to trade them. And that's the only thing I'm really worried about. And then and lastly, Pat O'Donnell will say $1.9 million by cutting him. Uh, he had some good punts throughout the year. Had a lot, uh, 
more than enough block punts. He had more than enough block punts. Some were his fault. Or whether you want to say it's his fault or not, that's on you. But if we need a punter, I don't see no reason to go out and get one if the Packers feel like he can suffice. Now, being that we had an 8-9 record, we have a middle-of-the-pack draft pick. We currently hold a 15th overall draft pick. We currently have eight picks, but Over the Cap has reported that they're projecting us to have a fifth-round pick for uh, Marquez Valdez-Scanley and two seven-round picks for Channing Sullivan and Oren Burks, respectively. Now, as far as our team needs heading into this offseason, in no particular order, I have Edge, Interior D lineman, wide receiver, tight end, and safe. Now, point of emphasis I wanted to highlight going into the offseason, just a mentality change. Just be more aggressive. Trade a draft pick or two if we're going all in. We will get them back next year unless you trade future draft assets. Of course, I'm not saying we should do that, but spend a fifth. Spend a, spend one of those seventh round picks that we might be getting just to get a veteran and, and even as, if, if that's around Jordan Love, if that's around Aaron Rodgers, I believe both of these quarterbacks we can run it back with because we will bring back a pretty decent defense and a pretty decent offense good enough to make the playoffs as we should have made this year. But I, I see this team, I see this team sort of underachieving this year, but still has the opportunity to win. And on the other hand, if we want to blow it up, blow it up. Don't keep around. Other guys that just won't benefit the salary cap of this team. We are in cap hell, and that's just the nature of it. We restructured so many contracts before this season, and now it's biting us in the butt. Uh, but we can bounce back from that, I'm sure, if we address the blow it up mentality now. Now let's move forward to the 2023 contracts. For our quarterbacks, we obviously have Aaron Rodgers and Jordan Love under contract for the 2023 season. Now, we did sign Danny Edling from the practice squad to a futures contract for 2023. And the only way I see him making his 53-man roster is if we were to get rid of Rodgers and he was battling whoever we might have signed during camp for that backup quarterback position. On to our running backs. As mentioned before, we have Aaron Jones. Uh, we also have A.J. Dillon. Patrick Taylor, and on a futures contract, we have Tyler Goodson, who spent most of the year, pretty much all the year, on the practice squad. Now, again, I do want to see Aaron Jones on this team in 2023. He's the catalyst of this offense, in my opinion. He's the most dynamic with the ball in his hands outside of Christian Watson. Uh, A.J. Dillon, who I also believe is going to make this team for obvious reasons, he's a second-round pick. He's going to at least play out his rookie contract. Uh, but I do think that RB3 is still up for grabs with Tyler Goodson and Patrick Taylor. Uh, Tyler Goodson had a really good showing in the preseason. I at least think he should come in. He could have came in this year and played some gadget snaps or even took a few, uh, kick returns back, especially when Amari Rogers, who is no longer with us, uh, was struggling to field punts. Moving on to our receivers. Of course, we got Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs, our 2022 rookie class receivers. Uh, Dobbs had a good showing in the first half of the season up until he got injured uh, in that Detroit Lions game with an ankle injury. Uh, Christian Watson. Now, of course, Christian Watson, he dropped that pass in the first game and it was just kind of like put him in the doghouse. Uh, we really didn't see much from him until that Cowboys game where he went off for three touchdowns. He also had an impressive second half of the year. Uh, I wish he could have started the season like that. Maybe we would have been having a different conversation. Uh, but moving on, we got some more Toure, uh, who showed some flashes. They didn't really get as many opportunities as I would have liked them to. Uh, he could have had two touchdowns in that Lions game if he wasn't underthrown. Uh, but he did have, uh, scramble drill touchdown against the Lions, which I thought that would have been like, you know, okay, Rogers, like I'm getting him the ball. He knows what to do when it's time to scramble drill. Um, but he just never really saw the field as much as I felt like he should have. And then moving on, we got Bo Melton. Now I would have liked him to get a couple of touches them last two games, uh, but we did have something to play for, but uh, moving into this offseason, he might be a good slot option, a good gadget option, a good kick return option, something. Just get the ball in his hand, see what he can do. Uh, because in college, 
after watching him in college, he did have some shiftiness to him. He added, I, I hope that he can add an element to this wide receiver group that we don't currently have, which is a legitimate slot option. That is quick and fast and can make you miss in the open field. And then lastly, on a futures contract, we have Jeff Cotton. Now, he's been in and out the building, uh, but probably just competition for the upcoming 2023 training camp. On to tight ends. Josiah DeGuara is our only returning tight end under contract for the 2023 season at the moment. Uh, I could see us maybe even bringing back big dog Mercedes Lewis uh, for at least one more year, especially if Aaron Rodgers plays. I believe he will come back. It's like having a sixth lineman on the field when he's out there. Uh, but hopefully we can add to this group through the draft. And there, there are quite a few tight end prospects that I like. Darnell Washington, Brevin Span Forth out of Minnesota, uh, even Michael Mayer out of Notre Dame. I think those guys can be true wide tight ends as well as receiving threats. Next, we got Nick Gugamos and Austin Allen on future contracts. Again, more competition for this 2023 training camp. Now moving on to our offensive line group, starting off with David Bakhtiari, who allowed zero sacks this year. Uh, I think he might have earned himself another year of Packer football, despite missing nearly two years with that ACL injury. Uh, like I said, whether we get rid of Bakhtiari or keep him, I'm okay with it. Uh, despite missing two years of injury from that ACL uh, and that freak accident. Uh, he might have just bought himself another year on his team, especially if we plan on running it back. He could be an important piece holding down the left side of that line. Now moving on to Elton Jenkins, who also had an ACL injury, recently signed a new deal. Uh, I had no doubt in my mind Elton Jenkins would be back on his team, uh, whether he had went to free agency or resigned during the season. Thankfully, he did resign during the season. That way the Packers know uh, what to do heading into this offseason regarding the cap. Next, we have former second round pick Josh Myers. Uh, very inconsistent to say the least. Uh, hope he can rectify that uh, this upcoming year. Then we have Royce Newman, who was a starter in those first couple of weeks, but then ended up getting uh, bounced out once Doc, uh, David Bacciari came back. Um, John Runyon made it, took another step, who was also under contract this year. Uh, Zach Tom started to show flashes as well, where he could play anywhere on this line, uh, from left tackle to right tackle. He could play anywhere in between. Uh, glad that he's on my team because the Packers love uh, versatile linemen. Uh, then we have Sean Ryan, who missed six games due to PEDs. I believe that he fulfilled his uh, suspension, so he will be ready to go in the 2023 season, and hopefully he can get on the field. He did not play uh, this season. Maybe he played a couple of uh, special team snaps, but zero offensive snaps this year. Uh, again, John Runyon, who again took a step forward when he in that from that left guard position, uh, but then once he moved to right guard, kind of took a step back, uh, and maybe it's just technique is different. Uh, then moving on to Rasheed Walker, who we drafted this past season in 2022, uh, along with undrafted free agent Caleb Jones, uh, Luke Tenute, who we signed off of the Bills practice squad, I believe, as well as Gene Dellens, who is on a futures contract. Now transitioning to the defensive side of the football, starting with our interior D lineman, starting off with Kenny Clark, who is one of the top D linemen in the NFL, and that's just not my bias talking. Uh, he start, he always starts the year off fast. I feel like he kind of dies down towards the end of the year, but he is constantly, uh, getting pressure on the quarterback and pretty much is our only presence in the middle of that D line. Next, we have Devontae Wyatt, who didn't really get much chances, had some flashes, showed some flashes, uh, just didn't really get enough opportunities, just couldn't break through the depth chart to get past, uh, Jaron Reed, who, Probably got the second most snaps on this D-line, uh, but he is an upcoming free agent. Next, we have TJ Slayton, former fifth-round pick out of Florida. Uh, he shows some ability to eat up space. Uh, still hasn't really shown any pass rush upside, but he can get after it in the run game. Next up, we got Jonathan Ford, our seventh-round pick out of Miami in the 2022 draft. Uh, didn't really play at all. Uh didn't play at all in 2022, uh, was said to have some special team value, but didn't see any snaps uh, this 2022 season. 
Uh, and then we had Chris Slayton on a futures contract. Circling back to Devontae Wyatt, uh, it's it I, it was a pick to me that didn't make sense. Uh, he's a twenty four. He came in as a twenty four year old D lineman. Uh, as we all assume, twenty four years old is pretty old for a draft pick, let alone a first round draft pick. And he was still pretty raw at the position. Uh, usually around that 24, 25 year old age, a D lineman starts to have those coming two moments. And, uh, he didn't, we, so I guess we expected him to do that off the rip or at least show those flashes. Show, he showed flashes, but not enough. Uh, but there is still time. He's still under the rookie contract. It's not, we could just have him for a cheap contract and be done with him after the four or five year mark. Uh, so we will see. Moving on to our edge group, we have Rashawn Gary, who suffered an ACL injury. I hope that he has a speedy recovery. Uh, he might miss some time. I wouldn't be surprised, but I just hope that he comes back 100% when possible. Next, we have Preston Smith, who was, I think, a sack off a bonus this year. Uh, he lost weight coming into the season, and it showed that uh, he could still produce. Might be more of an edge three than an edge two, in my opinion. Uh, but right now he is our edge two, might be even our edge one, uh, until Rashawn Gary gets back fully healthy. Uh, but he still can produce. And if he is able to get a running mate out of Rashawn Gary or our next, uh, edge, Kingsley and Nagbari, who was a fifth round pick out of South Carolina, uh, if both of them can emerge and they could just form that three headed monster like we had with Preston Smith, Rashawn Gary, and Zadarius Smith, uh, we'll be back in action. Moving on to Jonathan Garvin, who was a seven round pick in 2020. Uh, hasn't really done much of anything, honestly. Like, uh, if we draft the edge, I'm pretty sure he's going to take Jonathan Garvin's spot. And to round off, we have Ladarius Hamilton on a futures contract. Now, heading to our linebacker group, we currently have Devondre Campbell, who actually took a step back from his all pro year in 2021. Uh, we paid him a five year contract, uh, and it's no way out of it now. So he will be on this team next year. Uh, but hopefully he could be at least half of that all pro form that he was in 2021. Dealt with some injuries as well. Uh, so hopefully he comes back healthy and uh, ready to play in the 2023 season. Now, Quay Walker, uh, started off the year real bad. He had one of the worst run defense grades, according to PFF. Uh, but I did see him make plays. We threw him into the fire and I expected him to struggle. Uh, he might have even struggled a little bit more than I expected, but, uh, I would say towards the end of the year, he really started to grasp on things, really started to make plays on the ball. Uh, really was there in the run game. And I said, and he could still improve. He is still improving and going to Isaiah McDuffie, uh, more nothing really more than a special teams guy he did have to fill in some roles uh on the defense but i just see him being that special team staple for us heading to the cornerback class uh starting off with pro bowler all pro jair alexander uh he did get roasted a few times this year. I'm not going to lie. And you could go and see the tweets where I said he got cooked. He got cooked quite a bit this year. Uh, but what corner, what good cornerback doesn't? Uh, receivers like EQ, who probably couldn't even hold Jair's jockstrap. It was just kind of like frustrating to see. Now, moving on to Eric Stokes, our 2021 first round pick. He was showing some sophomore slump tendencies up until he got injured earlier on in the season it was a season ending injury so we didn't get to see him bounce back next we got Rasul Douglas who again had another five picks that he added on from last year uh still showed the ability to make plays uh I just wish that Joe Barry didn't put him in the slot starting off so much uh I think he should have moved Jair in the slot when it was obvious passing downs uh, but Rasul Douglas can can survive in the slot, just not in man-to-man -man defense, in my opinion. Now, to round off this 2023 cornerback group, we got Shamar John Charles, who really didn't play in the 2022 season. Uh, will he make this team this year? I doubt it. Uh, and then on future contracts, we got Tyrell Ford and Benji Franklin. Now, last but not least for this defense, we have the safety group. Uh, and in that group, we have Darnell Savage, which I said is a trade cut candidate. Next, we got Vernon Scott, who didn't play a snap in 2022. Uh, 
Will he make this team? I doubt it, especially if we can even get some safety help in the building. Next, we have Tariq Carpenter, who played a lot of special team snaps this off upcoming season. I fully expect him to be on the 53-man roster. Next, we have Ennis Gaines, who is constantly making a practice squad. Will he crack the 53? Uh, I don't think so, uh, but he is a name that's been in the building for the past couple of years uh, on that practice squad. And then next, we have James Wiggins. Uh, who was a highly athletic safety coming out of Cincinnati. He could probably make this team, uh, in my opinion. He was drafted by the Arizona Cardinals in the seventh round, but then he bounced to the Kansas City practice squad, and we signed him to a futures deal. Now, rounding out this roster on special teams, we got Parker White, who was signed to a future contract, so it isn't a guarantee uh, that he makes this team, even though he is the long kicker signed for the 2023 season. Uh, next, we have Patrick O'Donnell, who I said uh, we'll, we would say $1.9 million by cutting him, so it's no guarantee he makes this team. Uh, and then lastly, we have Jack Coco, who I fully expect to have some type of competition heading into training camp. Now, that just about wraps it up. Now, before we get out of here, I would like to ask you, the viewers, some questions. Do you think the Packers should hold on to Aaron Rodgers, or do you think he should – he should be traded this offseason. Uh, I'm on the trade Aaron Rodgers train. Uh, it's not that I hate Aaron Rodgers. Thank you for the Super Bowl that you gave us back in 2011. Uh, but I think it's time to move on to a new era in Jordan Love and just see what he can do. We drafted him in the first round for a reason. Next question I have is, do you think Matt LaFleur is the right coach for this team? I love this scheme. I love the West Coast scheme. I love the Kyle Shanahan scheme. I love the way Matt LaFleur play calls, but uh, when you let Aaron Rodgers take over some of the play call, and I do question the leadership a little bit, uh, is it enough to get him fired or uh, replace him? I don't, but uh, I don't think that it's enough. But again, it is a question that arises in my head. My last question is, do you think Brian Gutekinds is the right GM uh, moving forward? Especially if we go into a GM, would you like a fresh face at the GM position? Or would you like uh, Brian Gutekinds to be uh, the leader of that rebuild? Uh, I think he kind of dropped the ball on uh, signing our defensive coordinator. It's looking like we will have Joe Barry for another season. Uh, and just his lack of aggression of getting Aaron Rodgers' help. Given that we're in this situation now, especially, uh, I do question his ability to be our GM quite a bit. Do I think the Packers will get rid of him? No, uh, just because they're just loyal to a T. Uh, but I wouldn't mind a change at GM uh, at the moment. I might feel differently if he tra if he do what he needs to do, if y'all know what I'm saying. Uh, so let me know uh, in the comments. What you would like to see out of those three questions. I really want to know how you feel about the questions I ask. So please comment uh, and I'll be sure to get back to you. But until then, go pack go and I'll see you later. Damn, that thing. Why the f*** do that? <laughs>